this young man's been getting a lot of attention this week. He dreamed of owning a home without spending one red cent. And believe it or not, he did it using one red paper clip. Don Daler takes you step by step on his amazing journey. I embarked on an adventure and that paper clip symbolically holds it together. And it's really easy to remember, one red paper clip. For Kyle McDonald, it's a simple question. What is one red paper clip worth? The answer is more complex and more inspiring than anyone could ever imagine. At 26, Kyle has blazed a new trail in trading on the internet from his computer in Montreal, Canada. Starting with a single red paperclip, he wondered was it possible to make enough trades to eventually get a house? His inspiration was a childhood barter game called Bigger and Better. Wow, it'd be cool if instead of getting the job to buy the house, if I just played bigger and better until I actually traded up to a house. And that's when I looked down at my desk and saw one red paper clip and said, I'll start with that. Putting his job as a salesman on hold, Kyle placed an ad on Craigslist, a website that allows people to trade something they don't want for something they do want. It didn't take long for two young women from Vancouver, Canada to stumble across his listing. So I was just like, hey, Ronnie, check this out. Like, this guy wants to trade a paper clip. Like, what can we trade him? Like, what do we have? And as soon as I got the call, I'm like, wow, this is going to be fun. I'm going to make some trades. People actually want to do this. So the first object that you traded for was what? First thing I traded for was a pen shaped like a fish. Two days later, Kyle traveled to a convenience store parking lot to trade his one red paper clip. He then swapped the fish-shaped pen to a woman in Seattle, Washington, who gave him a tiny doorknob with a smiley face. The doorknob was traded to a man in Amherst, Massachusetts for a camping stove. What had started as a game was now taking on a life of its own, so he created his own website, OneRedPaperClip.com. Did you ever get kind of wacky offers? I probably get about five really weird ones a day. People started offering virginity, body parts, the soul. I said, sorry, I don't deal in souls or I don't deal in body parts. But legitimate offers also began coming in. He found a marine sergeant in California who needed the camping stove and traded for a generator. I went from a generator, which I thought was great, to a keg of beer, which I knew was great. And two days later, a local radio DJ named Michel Barret said, I need to get in on this. I'll offer you my snowmobile. So Kyle, who is now a celebrity, traded for the snowmobile. I can't wait to take it for a spin, but I really can't wait to trade it again. Then he was interviewed on Canadian national television, where he announced he would consider almost any trade, except one. I will go anywhere in the world except for Yak, British Columbia. <laughs> so I thought, well, that's safe. No one's ever going to make an offer from there. Anyways, woke up in the morning, the phone rang. Hi, Kyle, my name's Jeff. We want to make you an offer. And I'm like, oh, great, cool. And he's like... Our offer is, we want to bring you to Yak. <laughs> so you, he's here and he's got a snowmobile, but you... So Kyle traded the snowmobile for a weekend in Yak in the Canadian Rockies. Population 200. There's the keys. Snowmobiles are yours. He traded that for a small panel truck and then a recording studio contract. Then he met a young singer-songwriter named Jody Ganant, who desperately wanted to record her music. It's smoking, no joking. And, and with this smoking. trade, Kyle began to realize something very special was going on. That he was not only bartering for a house, but that he was in the business of granting wishes. So what did you offer? I offered one year of free rent in a one-bedroom apartment in lovely downtown Phoenix. So I ended up calling Kyle. She said, I really want that recording contract. This is my opportunity to get my album done. You know, her personality came through over the phone. I said... Done. Double bed. So Kyle made the trip to meet Jody with a legion of media following his every move as he exchanged the recording studio contract for the keys. And the keychain. People said, you got your house. You, you know, you've made it to this house. And I was like, well, it is a house, but I only have it for one year. I'm going to keep going till I own a house. And it was at this point that Kyle met a woman named Leslie Krieger, a friend of Jody's who wanted the one year's free rent so she could save some money. Leslie was about to make an offer that would launch one red paper clip into a whole new level of exposure. And she says, what I would like to do is get you to hang out for an afternoon with my boss. I said, 
who is your boss? And she goes, Alice Cooper. That's Alice Cooper, shock rock legend. The one little problem, Leslie, who works in his restaurant, hadn't yet asked Alice Cooper if he'd even do it. I started thinking about it and going, that's genius. And the, the smart thing is, he doesn't make a trade unless the other guy is getting a great deal. Without a moment's hesitation, Alice agreed. So Kyle headed back to Phoenix to meet Leslie, who was about to trade half a day with Alice Cooper for the one-bedroom apartment. Kyle said that I had to have something to trade because he was giving me the keys. And I had this mask hanging on my wall. So I actually made the trade wearing an Alice Cooper mask, shaking her hand on the front patio to her house. So there was a bit of symbolic trading going on as well. When Kyle posted Alice Cooper on his website, offers came pouring in by the thousands. But the next trade would be different from all the others. Kyle was about to make his first calculated decision. He traded half a day with Alice Cooper to a concert photographer from Cincinnati, Ohio, for this. A motorized Kiss snow globe. His legion of fans were stunned. How could a snow globe worth maybe 20 bucks get him closer to his house? But Kyle knew that actor Corbin Burnson, best known for his role in the TV show L.A. Law, was waiting in the wings. Because Kyle had found out he had an extensive collection of, you guessed it, snow globes. I have 6,000 of them. Yeah, 6,000 snow globes. And I never heard of the Kiss snow globe. And when the snow dome came, I said, gotta have it, gotta have it. I think I said, no, I need this. So Corbin gave Kyle a speaking role in a movie he's about to direct called Donna On Demand as his next thing to trade. There is someone out there who wants to be an actor, and I think this is an amazing opportunity. You are so excited about this, and you're not the guy who's going <laughs> to be in the movie. I I'm excited about seeing Corbin Burr's and Snow Globe collection. What happened when you made the trade with, with Kyle today? All day I was excited, and then when I saw it, it was, you know, that is a beautiful, beautiful snow dome. Wow. Christmas morning. Christmas morning, that's it, exactly right. God, this is awesome, look at this. Once again, there was real magic. Kyle touching the life of another person on his journey to turn a paperclip into a house. And just this week, a year to the day since he began his big adventure, the young man from Montreal made his 14th trade. This house, given to him by the town of Kipling, Saskatchewan, where they will soon hold open auditions for the speaking role in Corbin Burnson's movie. Kyle's dream had finally come true. What is one red paperclip worth? The paperclip in itself is not worth anything. It's what Kyle's done with the paperclip. And the power of this story is Kyle.